It was an accident, says my mother. My father, not paying attention, swung the chainsaw back too far, too fast, and Michael just got in the way. Chain caught his cheek, and that's the end of it. When they arrived home from the woods, my mother says my father walked into the trailer, said, we got a problem with the boy. That's what dad called Mike, the boy. Mike, seven years old, walks in, face canvas of pale pinks and shucked reds, all three layers of skin cut clean down to the bone by the machine in our father's hands. Your brother didn't make a sound, mom says. Never made a peep, not even on the way to the hospital. The surgeon did it for free, mom tells me years later. She says we were poor as shit and he knew it. He said if your father brought him two cords of wood up to his cabin, he'd do it for free. My father agreed, and just like my father, never made good on the deal. Just like your father, mom tells me now, to leave him hanging after he saved your brother's life. On the playground, Mike would peel back the gauze, show all his friends the chainsaw gash across his cheek, now hardened and marked. The cicatrix, our father split himself. 28 years later, and everyone still wants him for his scars. The five on his stomach from a celly in San Quentin, a toothbrush chiseled to a shiv. The six inch gash on the back of his skull, smashed into the pavement on 16th Street. His left eye pops out of his socket when he coughs. The first time he was jumped in Tracy. All 10 fingers, each broken and healed twice. Each mark has birthed him into a seamless clearing. Each scar, another felled tree. And I think, I think that's what a father is, a blade that never stops cutting. <laughs>